Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Prep Life Podcast. This is your founder and CEO of Glam Girl Bikini, Amy Anger. And today I am here in sunny Florida with Brittany. It doesn't look very sunny in our video if you're watching on YouTube, but hey, Brittany, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, I'm happy to be back. It's a little cloudy here, but it's still warmer than Kansas City. We've got our Olympia. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see she's got her Olympia Amateur t-shirt from yesterday when she competed and I have my 2021 Orlando so that was the first Olympia in Orlando and I think this will be the last so out of my three Olympias that I've gone to um, two have been in Orlando which is not common because they're mostly in Vegas Um, so I was gonna ask you a couple questions about like the show yesterday I was gonna share my thoughts with the amateur Olympia I always think it's good um, for coaches and athletes in the sports to kind of just like figure out like what type of shows, you know, especially if they're like a pro qualifier or a national competition, just like what the vibe is, um, the atmosphere, what are the odds, like what are some trends that we see? And then we were also going to go over our Olympia predictions because Brittany is here for multiple reasons, one of which she won the coach's um, incentive trip. So every year I, well, since 2021, um, I have had a coaching tracker where there's just different things and markers that each coach kind of keeps track of. And basically it's a reflection of like how many people they help, um, you know, with success on the stage, um, you know, like based on placements, um, client weight loss and um, all of that and kind of building a rapport. So we know that when coaches build a rapport, they stay around with them and um, they retain them a lot. So those are some of the markers that, um, you know, that she excelled in, that she was able to win this all expenses paid uh, trip. So you know, Glam Girl covers her flight, her hotel, um, and then we're going to go to finals. Um, it also includes that for the bikini finals. Um, so maybe we can do a follow-up episode after the Olympia to kind of share our thoughts. But um, yeah, so we've, we're have we going to be here for the week. We're here <laughs> for the, the long haul, basically every event. So we flew in on Sunday, and then um, on Monday we did check-in at um for the amateur and then all day yesterday on Halloween was the were the women's division so they went right from pre-judging to finals and then today is the men on stage so we're taking a break but you can see she's a little still a little orange, <laughs> all orange. with the show makeup <laughs> um yeah so we've been just kind of chilling and then tomorrow we'll go to like the press conference and um uh, the yeah let me the Olympia side. That's one of my favorite parts. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course we'll be walking around the expo. So we're going to air this today, which is Wednesday, um, a couple of days before the Olympia. So if you see us walk around the expo, make sure you say hi. And then, um, you might even see us in the angel competition bikini fashion show possibly on Saturday. So yeah, we've got a busy week. Um, what are your thoughts on just, everything from yesterday why don't you first start with like how you did okay, first of all so how I did um going into it I kind of dropped all my expectations I've had a really really hard stressful prep a lot of hurdles to jump through I moved started a full-time job still coaching still prepping lots of stuff going on um and I ended up getting not only first call outs but I taught placed in fifth place. So I'm very happy with that. Um, ready, excited to figure out what my feedback is. We weren't able to stay um, to talk to Becky, but um, we'll get to email her and see what we need to do for nationals. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get to the ground running and just keep pushing through for the next five and a half weeks. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to kind of share our thoughts. Like maybe we can start with like favorite part of the show and then maybe um, thing that wasn't maybe our favorite um, and as to why, you know, or, um, and then I can share a couple of like things that I saw from the 
you know, the press box, <laughs> um, just watching as an observer. Um, I think there's always like new trends that come up and I think it's good to share that with our audience. So they're prepared for what's kind of going on. Um, as we know, bikini evolves and so does our sport pretty much every show I feel like mm -hmm. has little nuances. So, um, I'll start with my favorite part. I, I really enjoyed the fact that we got to kind of, um, like get here and relax. Um, and I don't know, I felt like it was, it was just fun to have just you as an athlete. Cause sometimes like it gets a little crazy with like a bunch of people, but I, I felt like that was my favorite part just being able to like really take my time with like making sure your peak was on point and kind of like watching it every step of the way. Um, I mean, to the point where, you know, I was putting your tan around your back and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that was my favorite part. It was just kind of like hanging out. Like it was girls day. I guess. Yeah. I would say that's probably my number one favorite part about the experience too, is just having that one-on-one -on -one time with you and just getting a closer relationship with you talking about it because yeah sometimes when you have other athletes it's not that you don't give everybody attention because you do but like all the attention went to me <laughs> <laughs> um so it was really nice and just all the talking about like plans going forward and um just really gets me motivated and um but yeah the favorite part about the show I think is I've never done a show where pre-judging and finals are like back to back okay granted we yeah. did have a break in between but it wasn't four to five hours in between mm -hmm. so I really did like that and I kind of liked that like to me it's like a national show I know it's more regional because like you don't have to qualify mm -hmm. for it um but it is a pro qualifier to so for me like I think of it as a national show because national is you Profile. Yeah. I mean, um, it's even international because it's yeah. one of the only ones that people from all over the world. Yeah. I heard all kinds of oh, yeah. languages. Oh, yeah. There not very many English <laughs> no, no. girls back So just there. keep that in mind. This was an international yeah, show. Yeah. Just, but yeah. Regional. I still liked it because, I mean, the classes were fairly small compared to, like, I couldn't believe it. I figured since it was international and a pro mm -hmm. qualifier that, you know, we'd see 30, 40 like numbers and classes, but my yeah. class only had what 14. Yeah. I thought it was interesting in that regard that it was first of all on Halloween, it was on a Tuesday. It just um I was talking to Paul Ravella a little bit and he was saying how it's just an awkward time to mm -hmm. get a competitor ready for a Tuesday show. It's just very <laughs> strange. And he was saying also too like how um how you just never know because like there's people from like China people from I Korea. one one person was from Australia that won her class I saw yeah I, I could hear her voice it was really cute Australian accent but he was like you never know like these people bring it and I mean especially wellness like I didn't hear one English speaking coach like screaming at their, yeah, <laughs> their it was, athletes it was and crazy things. backstage like listening yeah. to all the girls but it was cool I liked it it was yeah I, love I got that. to meet, you know, some Canadians. Um, I met a Korean. She kind of spoke a little bit of English. Um, so it was really fun to like meet other people. But I would say my my negative sides to it mm -hmm. is they didn't let us stay like backstage with like our stuff. Um, and so they would call us back. And they allowed us to take like our bands with us, mm -hmm. um, but we had to get on our heels. They glazed us like right away. And then we were standing in line for like two hours before we'd go on stage. And like they had to That's continue right. to keep glazing us because we would dry, yeah. dry out. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my like negative side. And they did that again for finals, which mm -hmm. finals, I mean, the judging is pretty much done. Um, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but my feet hurt now because <laughs> I've been in heels for forever. That's a long um, time to be standing. Yeah, it was and it's very fatiguing. Like, they were like, You're it's gonna go fast, it's gonna go fast. And so like you're pumping up, but then you're pumping up for like two an hours. hour and I felt <laughs> like I was losing my pump. And so yeah, that would be the only thing. Like you think they would know by now that, you know, if 
they have so many girls like this is the time that we break, need to bring them back mm-hmm. um just yeah. like know how to run a show just a little bit more i mean it ran smoothly um it just they they didn't a lot like time management wasn't yeah the like there were several categories ahead of you on stage when you were already lined up and i'm thinking yeah okay wait was on yeah because it was like bodybuilding figure <laughs> fitness and then bikini and the wellness but yeah i would say the thing that i and i've noticed this just across the country and i think in the last two years master's classes have increased their numbers so much they're the biggest categories in every single show um I do think because of like changes with the economy like with inflation and things that the people that have the disposable income are like 35 to 60 plus Mm -hmm. um they're the ones that have the free time um and it was crazy how many people were in the 35 and how they did not split it I felt like that was an injustice to the the master's competitors there were like 30 masters competitors and they were all just in one 35 category and I thought it would have been good to split those up at least into like three to four heights because that was the biggest class by far of the Mm -hmm. whole show um or the biggest yeah class I should say in that category um but yeah I I mean there were people that were getting first call outs in their open class that didn't get like until second or third call outs and masters because I think there were five to six call outs and masters because there were so many yeah. competitors. It was crazy. And then so many crossovers. I think there's only like what five of us in my class that had to do their routine because everybody else out was, of the 14. Yeah. Was masters that crossed over. So that's nuts. But it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I met yeah. some new girls that I hadn't ever met before and um a awesome crazy friends, thing yeah. too yeah the girl that I met when I won the overall in Oklahoma last year she competed as well so got to hang out with her a little bit and so that was fun and yeah that was fun going to dinner with them yeah her and her boyfriend yeah. um but yeah I think you know overall I think that I've done so I've done the Alicante the San Marino um what was the other one the realm one that I did um well I guess that one was an Olympia amateur but I just think it's cool when you have a pro qualifier situation like how international it is and how different that is than a field so if anyone's looking to do a pro qualifier in the United States when you're thinking about you know the Olympia amateur in the U.S. um just consider first of all that the it's open to all international. So a lot of the national shows are only open to us competitors and green card holders. So that Mm -hmm. kind of limits the market. Then you look at like in North Americans that includes Canada, you know, anywhere in North America. So there's just different, there's different odds when it comes to like strategizing as a coach, like in terms of like what type of pro card. And then as far as like, you know, there's certain national shows where the top two get their pro card in a class and it goes a through age some have masters like this one you had to win your class then you had to win top three overall Mm -hmm. and I believe the the overall winner was an F and then E and B also earned pro status in bikinis so just something to consider there's just not as many chances um and it kind of you know it's something to think about like different physiques from all over the world you're kind of getting compared to but just as a consumer and like for you know if you're looking for a national show or a way to earn pro card just keep in mind those types of things um okay so shifting gears unless you had any other thoughts no I I think that's that's it the only negative was the time management stuff but other than that I loved this trip so far already um and we're only been here for three days, so we still have four more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited. The exciting stuff happens yeah, at, towards the end. Yeah, the exciting stuff is about to get started tomorrow. Yeah, so let's talk about this um, Bikini Olympia. Um, this is the 14th edition of having the bikini category as part of the Olympia. So we're gonna we're gonna put together kind of just like our pre-game thoughts because this is like the Super Bowl of bikini um this is our big show and this is like where you know 
we find out who's the best in the world when it comes to this. So last year, I believe there are 54 competitors. I think they were trying to limit the amount by not allowing points, which eliminates like three people from last year that would have qualified. There's a smaller window since last year it was in December. This year it was in November. So last year was the longest qualifying time frame available that we've had in history in the 14 years. Um, I think they thought it would get a lot smaller, but I think there's been so many shows that have popped up that it just went from 54 to 52 this year, which isn't a big. That's not a big difference. Yeah. Two, what, two minutes? Because that's yeah. two less uh, yeah. individual routines. <laughs> well, and what they're saying is, you know, usually pros get 90 seconds, but um, they're going to put a time limit of 45 seconds on okay. the pro routines. But still, that will take a lot of time for 52 people to get through. So um, basically, let's just kind of go over some of the the stats here. So um, we have four past champs. Um, so just naming those off, we have three-time winner, Ashley Colt Wasser. Um, we have Issa Pacini and we have Jen Dory. And then last year's um, title defender would be Maureen Blanquisco. And so four of them will be in it. Uh, Janet last year was part of the Olympia and she was a former in the last five years. She was a former Miss Bikini Olympia, but um, she will not be competing this year. But the fact that there's four people that have had that title um, no one other than Angelica Teixeira and Ashley Hey have really had like back-to-back wins. So it'll be interesting to see if Maureen can defend her title, if Jen can earn it back, if Ashley can earn it back, if Isa. There's so many people that um, we were just, I think Brittany was trying to put together her top uh, predictions. Um, I kind of, I did a, you know, like I have five that I think will be in the top five, I think the mix can be just like, it can be anyone's day, those top five, it can shift. Um, even the top 10 can shift. Um, so I have, you know, categorized. And if you don't know, for those listeners that have um, not really seen like what a judging score sheet looks like, once you've earned 15th place, everyone else is 16th place. So, you know, 15 people will earn a spot um, in terms of like a placement and then the rest of the 50, whatever, or I guess it would be 40 something. Um, is it all 16th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So as far as, let's see here. Um, I, I kind of wanted to go over some of like the, the dark horses, like some of the rookies. Do you want to, do you want to talk about the rookies for this year? Um, Olympia rookies that are going to be new because I feel like there's a lot of turnover when it comes to like the Olympia um you know we have like these up and coming people that just kind of come out of the woodwork um like Amy Delgado last year getting sixth place like I mean I remember when she won the overall at USA's uh when you did your first national show she won mm-hmm. oh my gosh I didn't even know that yeah so or wait no no it was I'm when no it was when I went with Sam um, when Sam got fifth in wellness at USA is, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just remember seeing her up there and I remember thinking she was so tiny. She's grown so much since then. And then, yeah, she ended up getting six, which is crazy. Yeah. So, and then this year she has done amazing. I know I mean, the Pittsburgh pro mm-hmm. and New York pro. Yeah, she's in my top she's, for sure. She's a yeah, she's a, gonna be a threat. I think there's there's so many threats. Like it could really go anyway. I I yeah. had a hard time trying to do my predictions. <laughs> yeah. So did you want me to go over the rookies or did you want to? Uh, I don't know if I can um, pronounce any of their names, but I'll <laughs> try. Um. So. Uh, Nidjay Nidjor, and I'm sorry for anybody that I don't <laughs> pronounce right. Um, she has uh gotten no lower than sixth place on all of her first um pro sh- six or six pro shows that she's done since turning pro in May of this year, which mm-hmm. is crazy. 
Um, and then a third year pro, Ilulia Baba, <laughs> um, competed six times at this year and um, winning the Arizona Pro. Um, and then Savannah Watchman, she's a second year pro. Um, she got, she won the California Night of Champions this year. And then Ukraine Valeria Federenko. Valeria. Valeria. <laughs> um, she won two pro shows to qualify for Olympia this year. Um, so that's crazy for a new pro as well. So um, they, they may come out and surprise people too. And, and yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to go over this full roster, but I was just going to kind of go over what I had written down. So I haven't shown Brittany <laughs> what I have written down, but um, my top five are, and she wrote hers down separately and I didn't have any influence on that either. So we'll kind of compare and contrast, see what we came up with. So I have Laura Lee, Maureen, Jen, Amy, and Ashley K in the top five. Is that what you had? I have Laura Lee, Maureen, Jen, Amy, and then Ashlyn. Ashlyn so oh, very okay. close. Yeah. I feel like Ashley is a little bit more seasoned. Um, yeah, I think Ashlyn, she's in my top 10 for sure, but she's a little bit of a dark horse too. Um, you know, as we know, in bikini, it can be anyone's day. So my my other five of that could be anyone's day of the top 10 would be De Raja, Issa, Ashlyn, Jordan, and Romina are my other 10. Um, and then as my last five, so like, I guess like 11 through 15. Um, and again, it could shift whichever way, and this isn't even guaranteed, but Eureka, Phoebe Higgin, um, Ellie Fernandez, Jessica Wilson, and Jibin. Um, I do think that there could be some major surprises um, in terms of like who shows up that day. Um, I mean, you take... First of all, let's just start with Laura Lee. Like she won the Arnold, she beat Maureen. Maureen got second at the Arnold, but she got fifth at the Olympia last year because mm -hmm. she came in way too lean. She ended up putting on nine pounds and then, you know, wins the Arnold title this year. So I think they learned their lesson. And so it, she probably is going to come in looking fierce, but, you know, you just don't know. This is her home home state she doesn't have to travel to it mm -hmm. so yeah you know hopefully she can you know have a perfect uh peak but yeah also marine like had the full um the fullness not too much like she just had the bikini look last year perfectly proportionate she could be doing it again so but then there's jen um she learned you know from last year too when she lost her title that she came in too lean mm -hmm. and so she could be coming back with her look that when she won so a little I bit mean full. it's yeah. gonna be crazy I'm so excited to watch it in live and in person yeah I appreciate um Phoebe and uh Laura Lee's podcast yeah um they were just talking about how Laura Lee you know when she went like Chicago Pro she was way too big and she was kind of just like talking about disappointments and she was saying how um, she feels like the reason why she won the Arnold was that she wasn't pushing so hard that she was just like relaxed, chill, like backstage, like happy. She didn't put any pressure on herself. Like her family was there and it was just like another day, you know, mm -hmm. and she was just saying how like, and I think like mentality has a lot to do with it because when we saw Janet who was like the second place sister for years and years you know she mm -hmm. always was like the bridesmaid never the bride um you know what it took was that it factor of her just having that confidence of yeah. like her posing was so sultry I mean you could just tell by the moment she walked out stage on stage she was it it. Yeah. yeah it was like incredible her stage presence so I think the judges have a hard decision um to watch that many individual routines too and be able to pick out um like my, I was I was talking to Gary Uta on an interview 
um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And he was just like, we love it when they make our jobs hard, but I don't know how they decide sometimes. Yeah. I mean, even call outs is going to be hard like mm-hmm. to, yeah, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to say the least. Like it's going to be so, I'm so incredibly happy that I am able to have this opportunity to be here and, and see it in person. And yeah, it's going to be another one for the books we thought last year was, but this year I think is even more, more so. Well, it was interesting because, you know, uh, October 9th was, I think the Pick cutoff up. for the qualifying. So, um, you know, the year before, I think it was battle of Texas was like the last one or something in Texas where Phoebe won and De Raja got second. Um, mm-hmm. and then she turned around and got fourth at the Olympia and Phoebe got seventh. Um, I, I have a feeling like something similar like that could happen with Phoebe. Like she just got sixth at her last at the hurricane mm-hmm. pro and I know she was disappointed, but like, I have a feeling she could be like a day Roger where she like really tightens up for yeah, the Olympia. The lights her fire and she and, comes in better. And yeah. Well, because she has put on a lot of muscle this yeah. year. Um, and so, I mean, ranking seventh last year, I think feedback was she needed to be just a little bit bigger because she is taller. Mm-hmm. So really it's anyone's day. And it's, it's crazy because like day Raja hasn't like fully, I don't feel like peaked or like had her top conditioning this year Mm -hmm. even though she's won a show um you know even her conditioning at that one was a little bit like borderline but I feel like she always brings it together for the big ones you know Mm -hmm. too so it'll be interesting on how everything goes and um you know I don't think we mentioned much about Jordan um and Ashlyn but I noticed they both got new coaches they both have the same coach yeah um and they had previous coaches the same before and then they made a big switch and I've noticed a huge difference in their physique and like mm-hmm. how much they're eating like they're different um like their you can regimen. just tell their regimen's yeah. a lot different so they're bringing a much different package to judge same with Isa you know she trained coach. with Ricardo forever and now she's with Atlas so and I know they've been trying to learn each other's bodies and kind of like figure that or I guess not each other's bodies but yeah, she's been doing he's trying to figure out he's just body shows to figure out how to peak her the perfect way and mm-hmm. posing. yeah so it'll be interesting um it'll definitely bring a different element than in past um I mean Laura Lee still has the same coach Kim Odo obviously Ashley K has Adam um, Mary from still has the same coach yeah yeah Amy does Jen does Ashley Kay does. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it'll be an, an interesting one. So um, yeah, if you're not here in person, um, you know, be sure to watch the live stream. It's always really fun to kind of watch. I We'd always have watch parties and things back home yeah. like whenever I couldn't yeah. be there in person. So And just so you know, fun. if you can't watch it, when you buy the pay-per-view, you can watch like the replays after. So if you're like busy on Saturday, it's and you your can't, bedtime. Yeah, or <laughs> it's me. Your bedtime, you can watch it like Sunday morning yeah. or something like that. Um it's definitely worth it. Uh, if you're a bikini fan for sure, you gotta you gotta watch it. Yeah, I'm really grateful to the Olympia every year, like past three years, they've given us media passes for Prep Life podcasts. So we'll make sure we do a really good job to contest coverage and um, kind of recapping our thoughts after the Olympia. But we'll kind of leave you there with that and those thoughts. If you would like to join our team, you can go to glamgirlbikini.com and hit the get started button. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Prep Life Podcast or at Glam Girl Bikini. Feel free to shoot us a DM um, or you can comment on the YouTube channel. Let us know what you thought of this episode. Let us know what your predictions are in the comments. And as always, we try to keep this podcast ad free and just to pay it forward to other listeners that might be interested in the same topics, please be sure to rate and review. It just helps um, other people that are interested in the same topics find us. So with that, we're signing off. Have a fantastic Wednesday, everybody. Thanks for listening.